So this is a summative neonatal OSCE for year three student midwives. I will be taking the role of the assessor and Jo will be taking the role of the student midwife. We will be running through a scenario and demonstrating a full resuscitation technique for a baby. Jo, welcome to your newborn life support summative OSCE. For the purposes of the scenario, I'd like you to assume that all your equipment is checked and working correctly. I'm going to read you a scenario and then I would like you to demonstrate to me how you are going to resuscitate this baby. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. So, Joe, a spontaneous normal birth of a baby on labour ward. There have been no antenatal complications. At birth, the midwife is concerned with the condition of the baby. The cord is clamped and cut and the baby is handed to you. Okay. The baby is blue, floppy and not breathing. Okay. I'm going to start the clock. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call for help. So I'm going to pull my emergency buzzer um, and I want somebody to call me the 2222 number so that I can have the neonatal team and also the midwifery coordinator as well. Uh, and then I'm going to um, make sure that I thoroughly dry this baby. And then I'm going to get rid of the wet towel that the baby is lying on. And then I'm going to put the baby onto a nice dry towel. And I'm going to wrap the baby up to stop it from getting cold. And then I'm going to uh, assess the baby. Uh, so the colour. The baby is blue. And what's the baby's tone? The baby is floppy. Um, okay, so I'm going to check the baby's heart rate and then I would tap it out. Okay, the heart rate is very slow. Okay, and is the baby breathing? The baby's not breathing. Okay, right. So I want to then put the baby's head into the neutral position to see, has that made any difference? There's been no change. Okay, right. So I know I need to give this baby some inflation breaths. So I'm going to um, size the baby's mass. So I'm going to check to see the baby's size. That looks like a good fit. So I'm going to that on there and then I'm going to give the baby uh, five inflation breaths in head in neutral position so I'm going to use my C and E shape so I'm going to give five inflation breaths which last two to three seconds each so one two three yeah. off two two three yeah. off three two three off, four, two, three, yeah. off, five, two, three, yeah. off. So I'm going to reassess the baby now. Um, what's the baby's colour, tone, breathing and heart rate and did I see any chest movement? So although you may have seen chest movement, for the purposes of this scenario there was no chest movement. Okay. The baby is still blue, floppy and not breathing. The right. heart rate is still very slow. Okay, yeah, just check the stethoscope. Okay, right, so what I'm going to do now then is, so I could use a different airway um, position, um, but I, have I got any help yet? No, your help has not arrived yet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is then just check that neutral position is right, and then I'm going to reattempt and give five inflation breaths again. So I'm going to go one, two, three, yeah. off, two, two, three, yeah. off, three, two, three, yeah. off, four, two, three, yeah. off. Five, two, three. Off. So I need to reassess the baby again now. So colour, tone, breathing, and I also need to check the baby's heart rate. Okay, so the baby is still blue, the baby is not breathing, the heart rate is still very slow. Did I see any chest movement? You saw chest movement. Okay, all right, that's great. So I've seen some chest movement. So I now just need to confirm then. So the baby's still blue and floppy, um, it's not breathing and it's got a very slow heart rate, but I did see chest movement. So now I'm going to move on and give 30 seconds of ventilation breaths. So I'm going to roll the mask back over. 
hold the face mask onto the baby's face. And the ventilation breaths are shorter. They last for one to two seconds. And I'm going to do this for 30 seconds. One second on, one second off, one second on, one second off. So that's 30 seconds. Okay, so after 30 seconds of ventilation breaths, then I really need to assess the baby again. So um, I'm going to ask you, what is the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate of the baby? And did I see any chest movement? Okay, so the baby is still blue, floppy, and the baby is not breathing. The heart rate is still very slow. Okay. You did see chest rise and your help has now arrived. Oh, that's great. So because we now have got five successful inflation breaths into the baby and 30 seconds of successful ventilation breaths on the baby, the baby's heart rate is still very slow. So we need to give chest compressions. Um, so could you um, help me, please? Yes. So for purposes of this, I will manage your baby's airway. OK, thank you. So for my chest compressions, I'm going to use the encircling technique. Um, so I'm going to put my thumbs on top of the baby's sternum, just below the nipple line, one on top of each other, and I'm going to compress by about a third. And I need to do a ratio of th three compressions if you could do one ventilation. Okay. So one, two, three. One. Two, two, three. One. And I'm going to do this for 30 seconds before I reassess the baby. Two, two, three. Three, two, three. Assume that's four. now 30 seconds. Okay, right, so 30 seconds are up, so I'm just going to reassess the baby then. So what's the baby's colour, tone, breathing and heart rate? And did I see the chest move? So the baby is now slightly pinker. The uh, baby is still floppy. Okay. The heart rate is now normal. Okay, that's good. But that's the baby good. is not breathing. Right, okay, so the baby's still not breathing, so we need to continue with ventilation breaths. Do you want me to continue mm -hmm. with that? Okay. I need to continue with ventilation breaths um, and I also need to do this for 30 seconds before I reassess the baby. I need to make sure that senior help is on its way. Okay, so you've now uh, done ventilation breaths for 30 seconds, Joe. Okay, so we're going to stop the scenario there. Okay. So I'm now going to demonstrate my other considerations. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, a single and a double person jaw thrust, if that's okay. So my single person jaw thrust then, I've got my bag valve mask ready, so I'm gonna splint the head, hands on the cheekbones. I'm going to use my middle finger to lift up the baby's jaw, roll the mask back over the nose and mouth, and then I'm going to um, give my inflation breaths in that yeah. position. Um, my double person jaw thrust, if you could help me, <laughs> would be I would splint the head, thumbs on the cheekbones, use my index fingers to lift up the baby's jaw, and then if you could roll the mask over the baby's nose and mouth, I would hold on there, and could you give inflation breaths of two to three seconds, um, five in total. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so other considerations then, um, I need to make sure that I maintain my professional conduct throughout. I need to ensure that the resuscitation drugs and equipment are available uh, for the neonate. I need to make sure that we assess the cord pHs, so I need to ask somebody to take those for me uh, while we're resuscitating the baby. Um, I need to make sure that there are identification labels ready to attach the baby should the baby need to be transferred to the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, there's going to have to be ensure appropriate communication with the parents and that's during the resuscitation but also after so it's important that duty of candor um, is uh, acknowledged. Uh, we need to make sure that there is effective communication with the multi-professional team so looking at communication strategies for that. Um, important to keep timely record keeping ensuring that the health and safety um, is taken into consideration. So that's use of personal protective equipment for myself, but also maintaining a safe environment for the team as well. Uh, we need to make sure that risk management is attended to, so an incident form will need to take place afterwards. And it's important to also make sure the professional midwifery advocate has been informed for support of the professionals. 
um, ethical considerations that need to be taken into account is to have an acknowledgement that there may be a time limit for resuscitation of a baby and also to acknowledge that there may be some consent implications as well. Okay, thank you Jo. That now concludes your newborn life support OSCE. So for the initial assessment of the baby, it's really important that the baby is dried thoroughly. The baby then needs to be taken off the wet towel, which is really important to do, and then placed on a dry towel to keep warm. It's important then to assess the baby's colour, to assess the baby's tone, to check to see whether they've got good tone or whether they're floppy. And it's also important to check the baby's heart rate and whether they're breathing or not. So checking the baby's heart rate, it's important to use a stethoscope. So I have an adult stethoscope here, but a, a newborn one is also appropriate. So. I'm going to place the stethoscope on the baby's chest and I'm going to listen and I'm going to tap out the baby's heart rate. We're going to note whether the baby's heart rate is actually present, whether it's very slow, that is below 60, or whether it's actually slow, which is below 100, or whether it's normal, i.e. above 100. When sizing a baby's face mask, it's really important that the baby's head is in the neutral position. We've got three different types of face masks here. So I'm going to check to see which one fits the baby's face appropriately. So I'm going to start off by dropping the face mask into the cleft of the baby's chin and rolling it over the baby's nose and mouth. As you can see from this one, the mask is actually too small. Check again into the cleft of the chin, rolling over the baby's nose and mouth. As you can see, this one is too big because it goes actually into the baby's eye area. The third one, I'm going to check, and that's probably the most appropriate fit for this baby. It's really important at that point that you take it off the baby's face in order to place it onto your equipment. And then, once it's been placed, on properly, you would then correctly apply it to the baby's face again, rolling it over. It's really important next to hold the mask on appropriately, so we're going to use a C shape to hold the baby, the mask down onto the baby's face, and then we've got these three fingers here, which are shaped in an E, which we hold on to the baby's chin. The slight chin lift up into the mask. And this is how then I'm going to deliver my air to the baby. It's very important that you squeeze the bag very slowly. Remember what you're trying to do and understand the physiology of trying to inflate the baby's lungs. So it's very important not to squeeze the mask too hard because you can cause damage to the baby's chest. So I'm now going to demonstrate the jaw thrust, a single person first and then a double person jaw thrust. Okay. So we've got the back of our mask and that's all been sized correctly. So I'm going to split the head, thumbs onto the cheekbones to steady and then I'm going to do jaw up. And then I'm going to roll the mask over the face of the baby, putting my two fingers on like that. And then I'm going to continue with my inflation press. So that's version one. Two person jaw thrust. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spin the head, thumbs on the baby's cheekbones, 
I'm going to keep my index fingers free because this is version one. I'm going to lift the jaw up into the air. You roll the mask onto the baby's nose and mouth and I'm going to lift my fingers up into the two C shapes. And then you can continue with inflation breaths. So version two of the two person jaw thrust would be where I splint the baby's head, thumbs on the baby's cheekbones. I'm going to use my index fingers to lift the baby's jaw up. You roll the mask over the baby's nose and mouth, and then I'm going to bring my thumbs up comfortably to hold the baby's head in position while you give your inflation breaths. Position of hands when baby's head is in neutral position. It's all about the hands, thumbs and fingers. Picture demonstrates physiology of jaw thrust position. Note the mannequin's face covering removed to clearly display the jaw. Mask in position to show version 1 of two-person jaw thrust using two C-shaped thumb and fingers seen from above. Mask in position to show version 1 of two-person jaw thrust using two C-shaped thumb and fingers seen from side view. Version 2 of two-person jaw thrust using thumbs on the mask and index fingers for the jaw thrust. So we're going to demonstrate uh, cardiac compressions. If you could take the airway, please, Mandy. Yep. I'm going to use the encircling technique. So I'm going to find the nipples and go slightly below, and then I place one thumb on top of each other, and I'm going to compress the chest by about a third of the depth, and then release, because my recoil is equally important to allow the heart to refill with blood. And then you can do one ventilation, please. One. and I can confirm I can feel the chest move and then we're going to do that in a ratio of three compressions to one breath so one two three two two three three two three I need to do this for 30 seconds before we reassess So the second technique um, of chest compressions is using the two finger technique. And this is if you can't manage the encircling technique. So Mandy, if you could take the airway, I'm gonna place my two fingers um, in the same place, just below the baby's nipple line on the sternum. And I need to compress in a nice straight line downwards by a third. So it's one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, and once again, that would be for 30 seconds before we would reassess.